Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the tensile testing and today we will start with the beam balance principle. Okay. First, let us see what is the principle of uh, measurement of tensile characteristics by beam balance. This is the basic principle here it is a beam A B okay, where it is a pivoted at point C. Now, if we want to know the force okay, the load on the specimen P we can calculate the load on the specimen P by knowing the force applied downward force applied at point F, F A and F force applied and if we know the distance. So, B C is the distance from the pivot point to the specimen and A C is the distance from the pivot point to the force applying point. Okay. So, this is the equation simple beam balance equation P multiplied by B C equal to F multiplied by A C. So, the load on the specimen P can be varied okay, by changing the F. So, we this is the load. So, if we change gradually, if we change the load that means, the P value can be changed so that we can measure the strength okay, up to the breaking point or by changing the distance distance that is distance from the fulcrum point C. So, that loading point if the load is constant. So, either we can change the load F keeping the this uh, AC distance fixed okay, then we can change the load A P or if we can keep the load fixed okay, f fixed if we change the distance a c if we increase the distance a c gradually then the value of p will increase. So, p so b c is fixed b c here it is constant if we keep if we keep constant if we only increase the a c then it will increase the value p and the prince this principle is used in Presley fiber strength tester. Okay. <coughs> Here in this Presley tester we test the bundle strength and the same the jaw which we have used in stellometer the same jaw can be used here. Okay. So, the same jaw which we are used and here it is the point O is the fulcrum point. Okay. So, here we have seen this is the point fulcrum point C this point is shown here O and point B it is nothing but here this is the point B and O and the point A the point A here it is it changes here. So, this is the and here mass of the this is the uh, the weight dead weight it is fixed and in this instrument the beam it is little bit inclined. So, that the mass slides down gradually. So, that the distance O A increases gradually the beam A B this is A B is the beam here which is pivoted at O when B rises okay, B it is moving moves up that means, the clamp C also moves up okay, this is fixed this is connected okay, and this applies the force on the fiber bundle 
here because bottom clamp is fixed here okay and top clamp is connected with b so as the load is sliding down it's increasing so it will apply downward force and this b portion would always like to move upward so it will apply force okay right initially the beam have a slight inclination this beam it has slight inclination so that once this dead weight is released its tendency is to slide down okay so it's a to few degrees a heavy rolling weight it's a rolling weight with a roller when released initially it is fixed when it's released from the catch the roller it's rolls down to the along the beam now as it is rolling down the force we have seen the way it, it's increasing so gradually the force applied on the fiber bundle will increase and a dash o increases until the fiber breaks so it's a heavy mass so the arrangement is such as soon as the fiber breaks the design is such this dead weight with the roller arrangement it will not move further it will stop immediately okay that's the arrangement as soon as it breaks it will fall down and immediately it will break it will stop and so as it break occur the arm ao drops this ao arm immediately will fall okay on this platform and the brake arrangement stops the carriage instantly so why is it required to stop the the carriage because that otherwise it will give a wrong result and as we have seen from the earlier equation this p value that ac value when that's bc is constant okay and this f value is constant bc constant a value is constant so p is actually is measured by measuring the ac value okay so ac is the indicator of the force applied on the fiber so that's why if we see this this beam is gauged this is the distance but this distance is gauged directly the breaking load value okay this is the directly it is the breaking load value it's gauged so the distance a dash o when when it's breaking is measured of breaking force it's a measure of breaking force a dash o the scale is directly graduated on the beam here it's directly graduated in terms of say gram per tex and the length of fiber bundle here it's 0.464 inch the 0.464 inch at zero gauge length now let us see at zero gauge length so this is the clamp this is top clamp this one is bottom clamp in bottom clamp in among these two the fibers are the bundles are we are fixed and zero gauge length. there is no gap zero it can work in other say stellometer can work in 3 millimeter gauge length here gauge length is zero so it this uh, there is no gap so the arrangement is that we at we 
the fibers fiber bundles are gripped um, that is a uh, gripped here then after that this excess fibers are cut by knife. So, finally, what we get this is one jaw this is another jaw and the fiber bundle is we do not know the five number of fibers and all this is a fiber bundle, but here the thing which is known is it is the length of the fiber bundle. The length of the fiber bundle is 0 0.464 inch which is fixed because here the jaw is fixed for Presley tester. So, this ensure the length which is equal to 11.78 millimeter. This is the at 0 gauge length the length of the fiber bundle. Okay. Now, after breakage after breakage suppose it is breaking at load of say x pound at x pound it is breaking after breakage we take out the this uh, this uh, jaws. So, this jaw will be like this after because this jaws will be separated this is top jaw because fiber bundle has broken and fiber bundle will remain like this. This is at with the top jaw and this fibers at the bottom jaw. Okay. Now, now we have to take out this fibers we have to take the mass of this fibers. So, from top jaw we have taken the fibers sorry we have top jaw we have taken the fibers collected and bottom jaw we have taken the fiber taken out the fibers and we have taken all this fiber. and this the mass of the fiber we have taken as say y milligram. So, this is x pound is the pound force is the force of the bundle breaking force of the bundle here it is the y milligram is the mass of the bundle. Okay. Now, now, here in Presley index it is the nothing but the breaking load in pound by bundle strength in milligram. So, this is gauged in terms of Presley index. So, Presley index is breaking load in pound and bundle strength in milligram. So, x we have seen pound and y milligram we have seen and we can convert this Presley index in terms of tensile strength in gram per tex by multiplying by 5.36. Okay. So, Presley index is also it shows the tenacity of fiber bundle and tensile strength is also it is a gram per text is the tenacity of fiber bundle, but their relationship is 5.36. Now, let us try to see how this 5.36 value we can achieve. Okay. So, what it is showing the Presley index it is nothing but breaking load in pound which is x and the mass is milligram which is y. Okay. Now, what is the length 11.76. So, 11 point for 11.76 78 78 millimeter length the mass is what is the mass y milligram and if we 
want to measure the takes of this fiber bundle, takes of this fiber bundle. So, we can measure the takes of for 100 for 1000 meter. So, for 11.78 millimeter the mass is y milligram for 1000 meter what will be the mass in gram. So, it will be y multiplied by 1000 divided by 11.78 in gram. So, this is coming out to be 84.89 multiplied by y gram. Okay. That means, the mass of this material 1000 meter is this much gram that is that is this is the text value. Okay. Now, coming out to be the now let us see coming to the uh, stress value force value that force is x pound we have to simply convert the x pound into the gram that is 453.6 gram gram force pound force to gram force and now the tenacity in gram per text will be 450 this multiplied by x pound x 453.6 multiplied by x divided by 84.89 multiplied by y that means x by y x by y actual it is the it was the Presley index. Now, if we see this value, this is nothing but 5.36 into x by Presley index. So, this is the tenacity. So, this way we can calculate the, the relationship is between the Presley index and the tenacity. Now, one can try so, for 3 millimeter gauge length what will be the relationship between Presley index and tensile strength when in, in case of 0 gauge length it is uh, 5.36 what will be the relationship between the Presley index and tensile strength in case of 3 millimeter gauge length. Okay. This we can derive okay. the load on the specimen P is proportional to the A dash O. So, that the rate of loading is governed by the speed of the rolling. So, speed of the rolling. So, that is why this instrument is neither work on CRE principle nor it is working on the CRL principle. So, if the question is that you explain one method which does not work on neither on the CRE principle nor on the CRL principle. So, that is Presley index Presley instrument is the example of that. Okay. Like stellometer works on CRL principle and if we can control the velocity of rolling rolling weight by specially made device we can achieve CRL principle. That is basically that is difficult, but in normal case it does not work. Okay. Next is the it is instrument it is called Cambridge extensometer. This instrument actually it works on both CRL principle and CRE principle. This is the unique instrument which works in both principle both constant rate of loading principle and constant rate of elongation principle. Now, the principle is that here it is used for single fiber or fine yarn. It cannot actually test very strong yarn, very fine single fiber with at, at lower 
lower breaking load because here the loading is with the help of by extending the spring. Okay. Here S is a helical spring okay, and force of the in spring we have seen force applied is proportional to the extension. If we, if we increase the extension then force will increase okay. and if we increase the extension at a constant rate the force will increase at constant rate. Okay, for spring. G 1 and G 2 are the specimen grips. So, red colored this one this is the actually specimen and at the top jaw that is G 1 top grip one leaf spring is it is one leaf is there. Okay, is the upper grip G is connected with the leaf spring this is a leaf spring which has a restricted movement between two electrical connects C 1 and C 2. Okay. This is the leaf, leaf spring horizontal and between C 1 and C 2 this can move and the distance between C 1 and C 2 is very, very small. Okay. Now, it when it is working in C R L condition constant rate of loading condition, now what happens? in constant rate of loading condition and this two screw rods okay, connected with the follower H 1 and H 2 the rods that are. So, this rod is driven by motor M 1 and other rod is driven by motor M 2 and this follower H 1 is connected with this rod and follower H 2 is connected with the other rod. When the instrument is supposed to work on C R L principle, in that case the motor M 1 rotates continuously and motor M 2 its normal case it will remain stop. Okay. Now, when motor M 1 starts moving the follower H 1. So, as move motor moves okay, starts the H 1 moves upward this one moves upward and this motor is stopped. So, this is the fixed jaw this jaw is fixed this is the jaw it is moving upward. Now, as motor M 1 starts H 1 moves upward at constant speed then the spring gets extended. So, as the spring gets extended at constant speed that means, loading will increase at constant rate. Okay. So, at constant rate spring is extending that means, the loading on the specimen is extending at increasing at constant rate as the extension of the specimen. So, as the load is applied on the specimen between G 1 and J 2. So, as the specimen get extended that means, this leaf spring will be in contact with C 2 upper restrictor which is connected with the motor M 2. As soon as this there is a connection there is a it is touching the motor M 2 will get signal and it will start moving downward that means, H 2 will start moving downward. So, that again till there is a disconnection and when it is moving downward again leaf spring will move little bit downward. So, there will be again it will be disconnected motor will immediately stop, but the motor M 1 rotates continuously it is rotating continue it is moving upward. Okay. So, 
the extension of the specimen will cause the leaf spring to touch the upper contact C 2 which starts the motor M 2 and H 2 moves downward for the short period. This cycle continues until the specimen breaks. So, this for very short time it will move and again it will stop. Okay. So, this will continue till the it is it breaks. So, what happens? What is there here? The movement of the H1, the movement of the motor is the indicator of the load here, and movement of the this M2 is the indicator of extension. So, as this one this motor m 1 is moving at constant rate. So, it is applying the uh, load at constant rate. So, when it is working in the principle of C R E principle constant rate of elongation principle in that case the things will be just reversed. The motor m 2 will run continuously and motor m 1 only will start and, st and stop intermittently as we have discussed earlier in case of C R L principle. Okay. So, that is why this motor m 1 will run and stop intermittently. So, as the motor m 2 moves continuously. So, h 1 will move down continuously. So, there will be a continuous the at constant the it will extend at constant rate. So, that is why this process is constant rate of elongation. Now, how to record? So, we have we can record the the load elongation curve here in the CRL principle a chart is mounted on vertical cylinder and the movement of H 1 that is movement of H 1 that there is a uh, it is recorded by a pin pen. Okay. So, that the chart is mounted suppose chart is mounted on a cylinder and cylinder is getting drive from the motor circular motion it is getting from the motor M 2 okay. and the pane is fixed on suppose on the H 1. So, vertical movement of the pane which show is it is basically it shows the load the movement of H 1 measures the load therefore, the pain moves vertically along with the H 1 and the rotation of the cylinder the actual chart is mounted on a cylinder vertical cylinder. The rotation of this cylinder will actually show the extension of the material. So, if we make a cylinder like this suppose this is a cylinder okay. now here it is a it is a um, the graph paper is there we have uh, we are placing graph paper. Now, the rotational speed rotation is getting from by m 2 m 2 is giving the rotational motion and the vertical motion is given by the m 1. So, m, m 2 is so m 2 is moving when there is extension and loading is there when it is a vertical motion. So, ultimately the resultant there will be a total plot of load elongation plot. So, this will give us the load elongation curve for constant rate of loading 
the motor M2, which runs only when the specimen is extended, is taken up and also the it rotates the chart cylinder. The angular movement of the cylinder being proportional to the extension. And in case of C R E principle, we can similarly we can get plot. Now, the next principle is that constant that it is a uh, constant rate of it works on constant rate of loading principle and this principle is known as inclined plane principle. Okay. The plane d b okay. what is the plane this is the d b is the plane it is tilted by dropping b at a constant rate. So, there is a we can it is it can be dropped at constant rate and there is a carriage here which is actually responsible for loading it is a weighted carriage okay, of mass w. Now, this side it is a b side is dropped at constant rate we can control by say any arrangement like rack pinion arrangement or by screw arrangement the plane d b is tilted by dropping b at constant rate. So, here if we see the p, p is the force applied on the material on specimen is equal to w, w is the mass of the carriage. Okay. This is the w mass. So, w sin theta. So, as the sin theta increases the w the p will increase for a same mass. So, p is proportional to sin theta here w is known. So, if we can change the loading that increase in sin theta at constant rate then we can achieve the constant rate of loading. So, p is the loading on the load on the specimen. Now, if we see the triangle here triangle the k is the fulcrum point k a b it is a triangle where this is the theta is the angle a k b is the angle theta which is which changes which increases with the drop, dropping of the point b. And if that is the sin theta sin theta is proportional to a b that is this a b where k b is constant this is a fulcrum point is constant this this beam length k b length is constant. So, this sin theta is proportional to a b here. Now, if we can change if it is dropping at constant rate. So, a b is changing at constant rate. So, sin theta is changing at constant rate. So, we are achieving the C R L condition. If a b is increased at a constant rate sin theta will also increase at constant rate. So, C R L condition is achieved. So, this principle we achieve C R L principle and here one arrangement is there this this side b it is simply placed on a platform here it is not fixed because as it is sliding it is at that it is moving down inclination is increasing so, this b ports point this point of contact will little bit slide left side towards left side that there will be simply sliding okay that's why it's not fixed it's only placed the this uh, this end is only placed on that the platform okay so sin theta is ab that we have discussed ab by kb now it's moving down now you can see this is this is not this little bit it slides okay it is moving down and the carriage is little bit coming on the right side 
it is getting extended, load is increasing at the constant rate and then it breaks. <coughs> at that point, as soon as it breaks, we have to stop the machine and then we can calculate the breaking load. Okay. Next principle is that ballistic or impact principle. Here there is a pendulum okay, and the specimen is connected with jaw 1, j 1 and j 2, this is the specimen okay. and after that this pendulum is actually lifted to the horizontal point here and with the height h 1 and when it is released pendulum will actually try to move okay, to reach to other point. When it is lifted the potential energy is actually stored here then with the and this is the height it is when with the material with the specimen attached it has reached the height up to h 2. But otherwise, if it there is no material, it should reach at the other side. So, it the potential energy was the at up to the height h 1. Okay. So, it measures the work of rupture, okay. what is the work done of the specimen instead of maximum breaking force. So, the in this principle, we can measure the the work of rupture okay it doesn't measure the breaking force now we can see the animation here so in the first step when there is no material okay without material we are trying to test now it's coming down free swing is there so the pendulum is swinging ideally it should swing up to the extreme point okay this is the free swing okay now now we have fixed the material okay when the specimen is attached to the pendulum and it is being it begins to pull the material for breaking. Okay. Now, now, again the pendulum is lifted here and now we have to release the pendulum. The pendulum is being released here okay. and pendulum is moving along with the yarn which is fixed at one fixed jaw and now the yarn is getting extended and after breakage the pendulum will not move up to that point initial point. Now, now after breakage the pendulum will not reach up to the that point initial point it will stop somewhere. and that height 
is and this is the height h 2 ok this h 2 height. So, now the now break the specimen at the position which is h 1 and the uh, that at the position t point t and the work of rupture we can calculate the w multiplied by h 1 minus h 2 that is the work of rupture what is the work required to rupture the material. Okay. So, initial work was there initial um, uh, energy was there and up to this energy it is uh, going. So, that is why we can calculate the work of rupture. So, the potential energy at point 1 is W H 1. So, when pendulum is released it swings down when it is nearly vertical it begins to pull the specimen at 2 point. So, here it will start pulling the material and breaks the specimen and after breaking it rising to the position of the 3 at the point 3. So, from there we can calculate the work of rupture and k is known to be the center of percussion. So, this is the k of the pendulum. So, what is the importance of center of percussion is that it is the point where there will not be excess jerk on the other side on the handle like in a, a cricket bat the point of percussion is the point where the batsman will feel the least jerk. Okay. So, that is the uh, point here. So, that point it is actually connected because otherwise pendulum will have different uneven movement okay. to, to eliminate that uneven movement we have to fix the pendulum at that point. Now, strain gauge principle, the strain gauge principle here most of the modern machines they work in strain gauge principle. The strain gauge actually here the movement of the other jaw is almost negligible. So, that is why we can call we can term this movement this actual principle as C R E principle, because whatever movement is there it is negligible. Here it is shown although it is bent, but this bending is very very negligible. Okay. In most of the modern tensile testing machine they work in this principle. Okay. When the beam bends okay, this beam bends the it has got three layers layer upper layer middle layer and bottom layer okay for any bending the top layer gets extended and bottom layer gets contracted and middle layer there is no change okay so it remains unchanged then how to convert this this value so, here what happened in this in the top layer and bottom layer that the resistance wires are fixed. Okay. Now, we want to that the deflection whatever deflection due to the load we want to measure. So, how to convert this value of change in resistance to the load value. Okay. So, that resistance changes due to the extension and contraction of the resistance. So, this is done by the Wheatstone bridge. Two resistance wires are placed on upper layer, these are the two resistance and other two are on the lower side. Upper surface is two, lower surface there are two resistance and which forms the Wheatstone bridge with the beam undeflected 
that is when the beam is not deflected no voltage across C D there is no voltage. So, it will not show any voltage and when with when a voltage applied across A B. So, across A B the input voltage. So, there would not be any output voltage because it is the Whitson bridge is balanced. When load is applied the beam will get deflected and the resistance value will change okay. and there will be output voltage across C D and this C D value this voltage value here is proportional to the load value whatever load is applied on the specimen this will be measured by this this application this the uh, this output voltage value ok. So, the main advantages of this instrument machine is that it is free from inertia. So, we have seen in other machine other uh, techniques like your pendulum technique or many other techniques the inertia effect is there. So, this is actually free from inertia and the deflection of the end of the beam is very very small it is a we can neglect that one. Thus the tester this is tested under C R E condition although there will be deflection if there is no deflection the load value cannot be measured but this deflection is negligible okay. and this technique is this principle is versatile. Here we can test yarn, fiber, fabric at wide speed limit and with wide load range. So, that is why this principle this uh, strain gauge principle is used for most of the modern textile modern um, tensile tester with a wide range of load requirement. Main disadvantage of this system is that it is uh, it requires expert technician because um, uh, lots of electronics are there. Chances of drift in electronic circuit. So, okay. so after repeated uh, repeated extension repeated loading the resistance wires may get extended permanently or contracted. So, that may lead to wrong results that is why this type of instruments need recalibration with after specific interval and another disadvantage is that its cost is very high. So, in the next segment we will discuss few other techniques. So, like, like constant rate of winding tester. So, that we will discuss in the next class. So, till then bye uh, thank you.